Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you had an amazing week as usual. Now last week I did a reaction video to, well, let's face it, a pretty bad hacks video. Since putting that video out all week, people have been saying, Ali, you need to make your own hacks video. Well, to be fair, I actually did make my own hacks video a couple of years ago, my top five street trials hacks, which I actually use and still do use. But there's one hack which I haven't shown yet, one hack which I said I'd never show, but I actually think I've changed my mind. The time has come to show you how to make your own brake pads. Now, if you're new to the channel, I haven't actually ridden for a little while because I've had a chronic neck pain, which is showing signs of healing, thankfully. But I'm a trials rider, so these brake pads I'm going to show you how to make are specific to trials. Not to say they won't work for other types of riding, but you can buy brake pads which will do the job just as well and probably a little bit quieter. We'll get on to making the brake pads in just one minute, but before then I'll just explain to non-trials riders that trials riders themselves are actually extremely picky about brakes, especially comp trials riders. They still use rim brakes, which are the type of brake pads we're going to be making today. And the advantage is that you can actually roughen up the braking surface to give extra bite, extra wet weather performance, but you have to use special harder compound pads. The way I'm gonna show you how to make brake pads will save a lot of money, and there's loads of ways you can customize and get the brakes performing exactly how you want. Now it goes without saying that any DIY project regarding brakes on a bike is extremely dangerous. The reason I've not made this video before in the years of requests is because I am a bit scared that with me showing you how to make brake pads, there's a lot of user error that can come into effect. But if you go ahead and do this, you're doing it at your own risk. I have to make that clear and important. But with all the intro and all the disclaimers out of the way, let's dive into this and I'll show you how to make your own brake pads. Here's some I made earlier for both hydraulic rim brakes and V brakes. I'm going to show you how to make both types the easy, medium and difficult way, depending on the backing and brake material you have. But first, let me explain what tools I'll be using. Firstly, a nice sturdy retractable knife. I've managed to make pads using nothing but this tool. It's also very handy when it comes to shaping some of the more complex pad shapes too. It's also important to replace the blades often, as the pad material will blunt it extremely quickly. I buy a bulk box and replace the blades anytime I'm needing to add too much force. To help lube the cuts, you can use a rubbing alcohol or a contact cleaner, though they can be a bit expensive. But soapy water is an excellent alternative. I'd avoid using any cutting fluid or oils as they will contaminate the pads. Next up is glue, and I recommend CA, cyanacrylate, which is also called super glue or crazy glue, plus other names I guess. It might seem a bit too simple and you'd assume you'd need some mega industrial strength stuff, but actually CA glue sticks to rubbers extremely well. Actually, here's an example of how strong a bond it can make. Once I glue these bits of pad material together, I physically can't separate them even with tools. So yeah, it's not a fancy glue, but it works really well. I use the thin stuff, but thicker will still do the trick. Another tool that will make life easier is a belt sander. I picked up a cheap one and it's been well worth it. This will make it much easier to get flat surfaces and a good texture for the glue to bond to. I actually clamp mine in a vise for more stability. A vise can be extremely handy for cutting pad material and clamping whilst gluing too, but I've made hundreds of pads without a vise, so it's not vital. An alternative to a belt sander is gluing sandpaper to a flat surface. It'll be quieter with less mess, but will take longer. Now that we've got the tools covered, let's move on to the pad blanks and materials. Now we're not going to make an entirely new pad from scratch, we're just replacing the braking material, so we'll need some donor pads to work on. They could be cheap new pads or worn down old ones. It doesn't really matter, as long as the backing works. With the plastic backings, we're actually going to leave the original material in. But if you did want to remove it, then leaving the pad in boiling water will weaken the glue, allowing you to pull it out. The reason I leave the original material in is because the backing has quite complex shapes inside, which will be extremely difficult to cut into the new material. Leaving it in will make things go a lot easier. But if you're using CNC backings, then the boiling water trick will also work well. CNC backings tend to be simpler too, and one of the methods I'll show you involves shaping the material to get a nice fit. 
As for V-brakes, you can either get a replacement cartridge type or the one-piece type. It doesn't really matter too much as the technique will mostly be the same. So that's the backings covered, but what about the braking material we'll be using? I've spent years buying and testing different materials and come to a couple of conclusions. Firstly, I settled on polyurethane being the best type of rubber, as it's got great abrasive resistance and is generally strong so it won't shear or tear. Rubber hardness, or durometer, was the next thing I tried to figure out. The hardness is measured in a Shaw scale, with lower numbers being softer and higher being harder. There's also a letter scale too, with polyurethane most commonly being in either Shaw A or Shaw D, A being more rubbery and D being more plastic-like. I found that polyurethane between Shaw 80A and Shaw 90A to be the sweet spot, with 85A being my fave, but 90A being a second best. The tricky thing is that not all chemical blends are the same, and there can be wildly different brake performances from polyurethanes that claim to be the same durometer. For example, these are all the same durometer, but all gave different brake performances, with some working well and others feeling a little waxy. Generally, I found transparent polyurethane to work okay, but can lack hold. It seems to shave off on ground rims and then roll on these shavings like bearings. This one is pretty interesting. It's 80A sandwiched by pink 90A. Experimenting with different geometers in a single pad has been something I've tried, and I think there's a lot of potential here. It also comes in a 50 by 10 mm roll, which makes the pads a whole lot easier to make. I'll link to some of my favorite material in description, but if you want to experiment, then feel free. I'd love it if you shared your experiences in the comments. I'm gonna show you how to make pads with the easier 50 by 10 shape, plus a bigger block. As you may have noticed, it's not always possible to get good material in convenient shapes, so you may have to do a lot of cutting. I'm using the transparent material in this video to potentially make it easier to see. Right, I think that's enough prep and material chat. Let's get to the nitty gritty and make these pads. Like I mentioned at the start, DIY products can be very dangerous, not just when riding, but also in the manufacturing process. Here I am showing that even though I've done this hundreds of times, mistakes still can happen. I got a slight nick, but it could have been a lot worse. I guess that makes sense that if you have a vise, it's best to use that to hold things when possible. But like I said, I've done this hundreds of times without a vise and still have my fingers, so just be careful. But what I'm trying to do is cut the old material flush with the backing. With a bit of soapy water and a fresh blade, it glides through pretty easily. I tend to do a rocking motion, which gives me a bit more control. I'm a little out of practice though. The flexible blade actually scooped below the backing. It's not ideal, but it is still usable. Perhaps a less risky method is to cut a chunk of the pad off, but keeping some distance from the backing, and then just sanding the remaining pad level. It's a little more labour intensive, but does give a better chance of a perfectly flat finish. But this is where the belt sander really helps. Just be careful with your fingers so close. Sanding braking material makes a huge mess too, so I set up a box to catch as much as possible. Plus, I wear a mask. And there we go, a perfect base to mount the new material. Speaking of, it's up to you how thick you want your pads to be. Thicker gives more life, but also a softer lever feel. Around 5 to 8 mil seems to work well, so I cut slightly thicker than that to give some room for error. When it comes to making a cut, I go back to the knife and soapy water. Rather than try to cut through in one go, I find it's better to do multiple lighter cuts. It's safer and it's easier to keep it straight. And now we have our first pad blank. Using 50 by 10 material is by far the easiest way to make these, but like I mentioned earlier, it's not always possible to get good material in this convenient size. So I'm also gonna cut a bigger block into multiple blanks. With this block, I can get four pads from each 50 mil section if I'm accurate. With a fresh blade, I carefully chop the block to length. I use a rocking motion to saw through initially and only press hard towards the end. Thank you. 
Now I need to cut this into quarters, so again I mark my cuts. As before, I cut it with a knife, but now it's harder as it's smaller to hold and the cuts are longer. But it is possible if you're careful and do multiple light cuts. I find placing it on the edge of a table works well. It holds it in place and makes it harder to cut yourself. The blade might want to flex and wander, so keep checking and swap sides to help keep it straight. Not the straightest cuts ever, but there's enough material here for this not to be an issue. I repeat the process again to give me my final blanks. Now I'm using a knife because that's just how I've always done it. I have to admit though, it is super dangerous and I bet there's plenty of people shouting at the screens telling me I'm an idiot. So I'm curious to see if there's a safer way. I've never had much luck using saws before, but I didn't have a vice, I was just holding it. I wonder if I can get a decent cut, now I can clamp it down. Okay, that worked pretty well. I was more accurate with the knife, but I have had a lot more practice with that. Let's try another cut using the vise as a guide. Not bad at all. This is definitely safer. So if you have a vise and material that fits it, this is a great way to cut it down. Another cut and I have two more blanks ready for the next step. With the blanks cut to size, we need to choose which side to join to the backing. Then it's a case of making that side as flat as possible. Now it is possible your blank might already have a flat side, in which case we need to roughen it up. By far the easiest way is by giving them a quick blast on the sander. Even if you have a wonky surface, this will quickly flatten it out and give a perfect texture for the glue. It can be easy to press unevenly and end up with the pad at a weird angle, so go light and check often. With everything flat, I give both surfaces a clean. Supposedly, solvents aren't the best for urethanes, but I've never found it to be an issue with things like contact or disc brake cleaners. Once cleaned, a quick air blast dries it off and removes any dust. And then it's just time to glue. You don't need much, but you do need to be careful. Just a few small drops will do. This glue can stick instantly and mess things up if you're not lined up, so take your time. Once on, press really hard to get the glue evenly spread. Now I've found hand pressure is enough, but you can always clamp it in a vise for a bit more peace of mind. I do exactly the same thing for the other blank. The glue's fully cured now, and the bond is good and strong. Now I was shocked the first time I saw pads glued like this, as I never imagined it would cope with the stresses of trials, but believe me, they're not coming off anytime soon. This pad is almost ready to be fitted, I just need to level out the braking surface. Whereas this pad needs a little more shaping so it doesn't foul with the brake cylinders. I'll also remove some material, but a thick pad like this can be a good solution if you're trying to fit a narrower rim on a trials frame. Now it's up to you how you get rid of the excess material, but the sander is hard to beat. The simpler pad is now ready to be fitted and ridden, but the other pad just needs the overhang trimmed to clear the brake cylinders. I'm yet to find a perfect solution for this. Some kind of jig would be great, but until then, I just trim them with a knife. The end result can be a little wonky at times, but it'll work just fine, even if it is a little ugly. So that's two methods done. If you can find good material in 50 by 10, then it will make things a lot easier and give a better looking result but don't be put off if you have to use some funky shaped stock. But what about if you're using CNC backings? Well, there's nothing stopping you from doing the exact same process as before by cutting the old material flat and just gluing the new stuff on top. But the better method is to cut the new material to fit in the pockets. 
It's tricky, but the end result is a more secure pad that won't fall out even if the glue fails. It helps to be accurate, but rubber is forgiving, so as long as you're close, it should be fine. To help things, I work out how wide and deep the pockets are, and then mark on the pad blank. Then it's just a case of very carefully cutting along these lines and creating a raised centre channel. I then freehand the next few cuts using the backing to line them up correctly. Now I just need to cut the centre section out. Again, I just freehand this like before. It can be tricky, but do a little at a time, ideally cutting away from you as this can slip. You'll eventually end up with a nice square result. This will hopefully be a nice push fit into the CNC backing. And there we go, pretty neat huh? Then just like before, a clean, dry and a dab of CA glue should be enough for a secure bond. With this being the bigger blank, there is some overhang that also needs to be trimmed. With the overhangs removed and a levelling on the sander, the CNC pad is now finished. This is definitely the most complex, but also the best in terms of brake performance, due to the stiffer backing, and safety, so it's totally worth it in my eyes. But what if you like me and prefer V-brakes? V-brake pads tend to be longer unless you use TNN CNC backings, which are the same as before, and well worth it if you can find them. But you still could use the 50x10 polyurethane if you cut a chunk off for longer cartridge style pads. If you're using a new one piece pad, you need to remove a chunk of material. You can sand it off, or to save a lot of mess, try and cut it off. Of course I didn't cut it level, so I do a little bit of sanding to fix that. I'm going to use my favourite material this time, as I might actually want to use these pads. This is the first time using a saw with it. It's a little more wasteful than a knife, as I'm not as accurate, but it is a lot safer. With the backing flat, I sand the braking material flat too. After a clean, it's simply a case of gluing them together. Unfortunately in this case, this almost instantly bonded and I haven't got the position right. It then took all my strength to separate them. The breaking material is fine after another sand, but the backing started to pull apart and I don't feel comfortable using it. It is possible to use the metal skeleton on its own. I've done it before and it seemed to work well, but it's tough getting everything flat, so I wouldn't recommend that for your first try. I'm going to start again, only this time with an old worn one that only needs a little bit of sanding. <laughs> I've never thought it was a yellow pad. But yeah, let's try this again. Much better this time. 
Without any cylinders to clear, it's up to you what shape you want the pad to be. I firstly trim off some fat, and then I decide to match the shape of the original pad, which means a lot of sanding. And here's the end result. It's still quite thick, but I can sort that later. The same process will work on cartridge style pads too. In fact, I could probably sum up this whole video by saying, sand thing is flat, stick new pad on. That would have saved a lot of time, huh? But there's so much more to explore. I don't think we've found the perfect pad yet, but it's fun searching for it. So there we go, that is the video I said I would never make. It's funny what a bit of peer pressure will do, eh? But hopefully you've watched that and now you are confident and comfortable making your own brake pads. Like I said at the start of the video, I'm going to repeat it again, making anything DIY to do with your brakes, including making brake pads, can potentially be extremely dangerous. If your brakes fail, if your brakes come away from the backing, you could get seriously injured. So take your time, make sure things are as straight as they can be, nice and clean, use good quality glue, and hopefully you'll be all right. After last week's reaction video, hopefully this shows I can walk the walk as well as talk the talk. I think making brake pads is one of the ultimate hacks. Now the way I've shown you how to make brake pads, I'm not claiming is the best way to make brake pads, it's just the way that I found works for me. I've always had quite limited space, limited tools, so all the previous brake pads I've made over the years, I've never even had a vice, I've literally just used a knife. So if you make your own brake pads and find a better way of doing it, then that's fantastic. Let me know, because I've definitely got room to improve. I'm going to call it there though everyone, I hope this video was enjoyable, I hope it was useful for you. If you do like the content that I make and want to support me then yeah, please hit the subscribe button. I also have Patreon and merch available all linked down in the description. I hope you have an absolutely amazing week and I will catch you next time. So take care everyone, bye bye.